way to grow hair. So far, it's only being tested in mice, but the results are promising. The idea removing healthy cells from the scalp. They would be grown in a lab to boost their numbers before being injected back into the patient's head. The findings are published by the National Academy of Sciences. Angela Cristiano is the study's senior author. She's a professor of dermatology and genetics at Columbia University Medical Center. Good morning. Good morning. So, do you think this is a breakthrough? It's actually a significant uh, new finding. Right? It's the first time, really, that we've been able to use a patient's own cells to induce uh, new hair follicles. And so up to now, the conventional way of doing hair transplant is to relocate hairs from the back of the head to the front of the head. But there's actually no gain in the number of follicles. It's just a relocation. With this method, we actually have the opportunity to try and multiply the number of cells and make new hairs. Right, and for people who don't know, because I've just learned about this too, people gr actually grow more hair in the back and then they transplant that onto mm -hmm. the front of the head. This allows you to grow the follicles in a petri dish mm -hmm. and then replant them. But how is that hair though? What's the quality? So for now, they're sort of rudimentary hairs. They're clusters of cells that when you put them in contact with another part of the skin can actually induce a whole new hair. Um, we hope over time that these, once they're implanted, will grow into you know, robust thick hairs uh, in human skin. Uh, does the possibility of getting approval for this will take mm -hmm. how many years? Well, it's an interesting regulatory path, Charlie, because uh, it's not quite a drug. Uh, and so they're, uh, they're called autologous uses for these cells, so meaning you're getting them to do the same thing they already do. And we're not doing anything to them, so they're minimally manipulated. So we hope it's a smooth path. Just Here's what's years. interesting to me, yeah. and we were talking about this when you first sat down sure. before we were back on the air. If someone finds a way to grow hair naturally, mm -hmm. uh, they will become the richest person in the world <laughs> if they can patent it. If they can patent so. it. Richer than, than, than the than, Silicon Valley giants. Richer than Carlos Slim, you know, <laughs> richer than everybody. Uh, but, so the question is, I would assume that with that kind of payoff, tons of money are being directed to the effort. Oh, that would be wonderful if that were but true. But it's not true. <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> so, but is that because people think it's impossible? Well, it's, um, it's difficult time for research funding all the way yeah. around yeah, right but now. But I mean, the payoff here is so obvious. So, it's like, uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's like a satin or something. It's a good time there for stem cell research. And so yeah, regenerative medicine. So stem medicine, cell might be the yeah, possibility. So regenerative medicine is, is one of the hottest things in science these days, yeah. using the body's own cap capabilities to grow. So what do you think is cells? possible in the next five years? We'd love to see this in clinical trials in the next few years. So what's actually, preventing so clinical trials? Nothing yet. Uh, you mm. know, this is new. It's a new way right. of doing things. So I think it's important that we, you know, roll it out slowly and cautiously. But we're optimistic that we can actually, you know, be in patients in the next three to five years. I don't mm. think that's unrealistic. Three to five years. Yeah. Wow. Angelo Cristiano, yeah. good to see you. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me.